So if you're sitting at home right now with just this strong hankering for a film that will give you a heart attack and then slowly, lovingly resuscitate you, look no further than Trey Edward Schultz's Waves, available for rental on iTunes and Amazon Prime. Yes, indeed, this is yet another film from 2019, like Uncut Gems, that did make its way to the top of my favorite films of that year list, but I just didn't have time to review when it first came out. And in this instance especially, I had to change that because I love this film. Yes, it will receive a large heart at the end, spoilers. But as I rewatched the film, I really did want to press myself and really figure out specifically why. Why do I like this film so very much? Because like I mentioned at the top of this review, like a film like Uncut Gems, it was kind of cardiac arrest inducing. And why would I in fact enjoy a film that was so very stressful? It's a fair question, right? Why would I enjoy something that is in a lot of ways negative in the emotions that it presents. Well, I think a large part of it comes from the fact that I, and I think a large majority of our culture as well, is decently desensitized. And so if I'm able to walk into a darkened cinema and experience something that genuinely reaches out, grabs me by the collar and shakes me alive and awake, I can only actually respond thankfully to that, to be given an experience that is in fact real emotionally. So writer-director Trey Edward Schultz may have actually made me feel these negative emotions of shock, terror, dread, and despair, but he was able to make me feel those things in a very real way, and that is not easy at all. Even more impressive than that, and I think what really clinched it for me and what makes me love this film as much as I do, is the fact that Trey Edward Schultz did make me feel negative emotions, but he didn't push me away because of them or through them. He was like a really good coach or a trainer or some drill sergeant in the army who would scream at me and yell at me and push me hard, but not break me. In fact, his intention was to build me up. Honestly, in my opinion, it really is one of the signs of a brilliant storyteller, that they're able to make me, their viewer, endure something negative and yet walk away feeling that much more alive and connected to the world around me and the people in it. And part of the way that Schultz did that in Waves was by presenting and maintaining these super clear, hyper-focused points of view throughout the entire film, and doing so utilizing all of these cinematic tools at his disposal. Now, for those of you that have not yet seen this film, I'm going to, as best I can, remain vague in this department because watching for the first time what exactly he does with point of view in this film is just, it's wonderful to behold for that first time and I certainly don't want to undermine that in any way. So let me just say, the way that Schultz plays with point of view in this film was definitely one of my favorite parts of it and certainly one of its most impressive elements. It's intensely effective and focused when it needs to be, and then shifts, broadens, and transforms when it ought to. Again, the very intentional ways that Schultz plotted and structured those shifts, broadenings, and transformations was probably my favorite part of the film. As it opened, we were introduced to the character of Tyler, this guy in high school who seemed to have this pretty great existence. He had the great girlfriend, the great friends, the wonderful family, the success in sports, the beautiful place to live, but not really. And as we started to narrow the point of view and the focus in on what was actually happening in his heart and his mind, the less than pretty truth started to come out. We started to see his self-centeredness, his insatiable desire just for this more, 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 and this unwillingness to let go and listen to love rather than to fear. And again, to showcase this, Schultz used nearly every cinematic tool in his toolbox. There were a number of scenes that played out between Tyler and other characters, for example, where the camera heavily favored Tyler, sometimes refusing to include other characters in his shot or maybe never even cutting to them at all. Schultz also chose these environments where he could quite naturally, but also quite dramatically spotlight the light and color in on that central character. And the music, both the score by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, as well as the soundtrack, was just so evocative, clearly communicating the cacophony that was so often happening within Tyler's mind and just the fear that was gnawing away at him. And also the director went so far as to dramatically switch up the film's aspect ratio, going from 1 8 
1,285 to 240 to sometimes this 265 to the 137 and then back out again. And then also something else that's so beautifully communicated and displayed the points of view and perspective of the characters was just the overall rhythm of this film. And sometimes that rhythm was dictated and communicated through the edits, so quick frenetic cuts for quick chaotic scenes or long drawn out shots for more slow ponderous moments. But more than anything, the rhythm of waves was felt in its soundtrack and the camera movement. The camera was so alive on this film. And yes, I've got to give props to Schultz as the director and Drew Daniels as the cinematographer for conceiving of these camera moves. But really, my hat has got to go off to Oswaldo Silveira Jr., the Steadicam operator. I mean, that, that guy is a real life superhero. These moves were so complicated and I'm sure were so challenging to execute around and around and up and down stairs and through doorways and into cars. Complicated, but ultimately proved to be so worthy of that investment because of the way that they captured and communicated that rhythm and just presented the overall tone of the entire piece. Of course, I don't want to make it sound like it was just those behind the camera that made this film so very powerful. The cast was also, across the board, outstanding. And leading that charge was Kevin Harrison Jr. As Tyler, I mean, whew, what a performance. He really was asked to display such a range of emotions, from ecstasy and exuberance, to despair and numbness, to rage and malice. All of it was career making good. I mean, there were certain moments in this film that were so hard to watch. There was one in particular where the character was just at rock bottom and really only able to pull himself from one vice to the other, from alcohol to pornography to food. And again, it was just so hard to watch, but also so powerful and so real thanks to Harrison Jr. Now, like I mentioned at the top of this review, this film didn't just give me a heart attack and leave me unconscious in the dust. It also slowly, lovingly resuscitated me. And a large majority of that resuscitation came through the characters played by Taylor Russell and Luke Hedges. The pair breathed so much tenderness and sweetness into the film, it bordered at certain moments on saccharine, but I would argue never fully fell into that schmaltzy, over-the-top territory. And a lot of that came down to the fact that you could always see those two performers and every single scene that they were in together just fighting to find the truth of that moment. Oftentimes it was something very simple, but something real and relatable nonetheless, and it did work. Now, I have read certain critics who have said that this film is just a little bit too fractured, and while I don't want to specify exactly why these critics are saying that, again, to avoid spoiling anything for you, let me just say, when you watch the film, you will probably quite quickly see why certain critics would level that complaint at this film, and that is, in fact, an understandable complaint. From my perspective, though, I didn't think that Schultz was trying to accomplish too much with Waves, or that his thematic and narrative goals were too lofty. For me, I felt like I was always able to perceive just the right amount of intention and purpose behind those structural choices to justify them. I felt like I could really see Schultz with this film wanting to, in the same film, show something get viciously ripped up by the roots, and then also press into the void left behind after that thing had been ripped up. And by combining both the tragedy and the comedy, so to speak, the fear and the love, the violence and the grace, he was able to, with one film, say something that was that much more profound, or at least something that was that much more interesting and nuanced. And for all these reasons, I will give Waves a 4.5 out of 5, and definitely a heart. I would still love to know what you guys thought of the film, though, so definitely comment below and let me know. And yes, indeed, in this strange season of no new films at the cinema, I will just continue to review films that are available on streaming. And thank you so much for all your excellent suggestions that you made to me last week on my review for Uncut Gems. I will definitely get around to reviewing a lot of those films quite soon. I'm also contemplating reviewing a series, one that I have never reviewed before. So one of the thoughts that I was having was maybe the Harry Potter series, or maybe the Pirates of the Caribbean series, or at least the first three of those films, which I'm actually quite a big fan of. So definitely comment below and let me know if one of those series is interesting to you or maybe some other series that I haven't reviewed all of. But for now, please just subscribe. I'm going to continue to review films and television on this channel, and I would love for you to stay up to date on all of those things. But for now, I'm Chris Artwell. 
This is The Heartbeat. Thank you for joining me.